they have it. But yet, a lot of molestation, sexual molestation, takes place in these homes. It's not reported because poor mommy goes into denial because that stigma that would be attached to her, having to leave her husband and leave all the material things that they have, the holiday abroad in France or wherever, the children could go anywhere. So she goes into denial. That poor child just sings. It destroys the child either completely or the children come very rebellious and defiant, and it's a, the whole family becomes dysfunctional. On the grounds of the Holberton Hospital, St. John's Antigua, we found the Child and Family Guidance Center, a subgroup of COPE, the Collaborative Committee for the Promotion of the Emotional Health of the Child. This we found rather innovative, something close to what was happening at Marion House in Kingstown, St. Vincent. When I think of child abuse, I think the thing that comes to mind is a child. I see a child who is being introduced to something that they cannot handle. A child's psyche cannot process uh, sexual activity with another person, particularly a trusted person. Dr. Albertine Maturin Jurgensen is director of psychiatric services in Antigua and was instrumental in the establishment of COPE. The child's psyche, the child's mental capacity, the child's mental life cannot really process sexual activity, cannot process what goes into a sexual relationship. As a kid, I think sex was gross. You see people kissing and air. <laughs> You just think of a child going through school. You know, when learning is introduced to a child, they can process it, especially when it's done by a very good teacher. They can move from understanding mathematics into really complex type of um, learning of mathematics, but they cannot, the child, a child psyche, it was not created to be able to process sexual activity. COPE is an NGO set up in 1987. Among its many functions, the organization provides support to parents and families. So you're always on the go. As a parent, you're always on the go. And what you may find, the parent is pushed to the, the point where, because they cannot manage the child, they will lash out in different ways. They will punish them with all different kinds of things in order to try and get through to them, to get them to stop what they're doing. And it doesn't always work. So as a result, you have a lot of children who are presenting with you know, bruises. They're, they're being beaten with all manner of things. You know, we had a five-year-old, no, he was actually seven-year-old, who was admitted to hospital. The father had really lost it, and, you know, he just beat him, he beat him, he beat him. His face was just really a mess. But that was, you know, it was, the child has since been diagnosed as having attention deficit hyperactivity, but the, 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 the parent needed help. Astor Allen works also as a counsellor at schools. In my first week back at school in September, I think within the first week, I had, um, I think, two suicidals. Um, they just had enough. They couldn't take any more. They just wanted to kill themselves. I had um, children who were being punished and were separated from their main family, who they had known had been sent into a different culture as a form of a punishment. They were very distressed and, you know, couldn't manage the separation, didn't really know what to do. It was a new culture. You had children who didn't know how they were going to eat. You have a, a whole range of things. So I think that not a neglect and the physical aspects, I see that more so from the school's point of view. We do have quite a bit of that here at COPE, but we have more sexual abuse than we have the physical. Recently, a new sex culture emerged in Antigua, threatening the dignity of the child. For instance, the government has set up a committee to look into, it's a task force on child pornography and prostitution. And we have been meet, I'm a member of that committee, and we have been meeting focus groups, right? And one interesting thing that I, will, I was impressed by, that the focus group for the elderly women, they explained to me, look, this thing is going on long, long, long time since we were a little girl. Children do not introduce themselves to pornography. This is adults sucking them into this activity. And I think that 
it's adults using children, you know, using children for their sexual satisfaction. I think that the people who commit, commit these crimes should be disciplined, disciplined severely. What uh, we have heard rumors of is of young children after school being taken into various localities and places and um, maybe videotaped with their clothes off and in very provocative sexual positions. In Antigua, there is a group of women who call themselves POWA, P-O-W-A, the professional organization for women in Antigua and Barbuda. They gather here for meetings at the Island Inn in McKinnon's, just outside St. John's. Allegations of a pornography ring in Antigua caught the attention of Powers' Kevin Mockerson, who shares a chronology of snippets with us. We began the chronology on the 15th of September, 2001, when police hold two suspects for questioning in a case of an alleged pornographic and prostitution ring disguised as a modeling agency. It involved several underaged girls. The nation was shocked by media reports that a 13-year-old victim had brought this matter to the attention of her aunt, who then reported it to the police. The laws of Antigua and Barbuda expressly prohibit media identification of alleged perpetrators and of sexual offenses. So we were not privy to not even a hint of who these people could be. Our national hero, Sir Vivian Richards, spoke out against the child sexual scandal. That day, that evening, Power launched a petition to the Prime Minister to revise and strengthen the Sexual Offenses Act so it could provide better protection for our children. That morning, the Prime Minister announced the formation of a task force to analyze the root causes of child pornography and prostitution. From about April, just until the beginning of September, about eight cases have come into power as a result of um, just, you know, expressing its disgust at the whole pornography issue. And with those cases coming in, those eight cases have been reports from April to September, reports, and they've been followed through. Now, if one small NGO who does not specialize in that um, issue can get that many cases being called in, how much more established agencies over a period of a whole year? Why is it our records are showing the small amount of number? Powell met with the Prime Minister and his delegation, presented a petition with nearly 9,000 signatures. At this juncture, it is critical that Article 34 be repeated. Article 34, the state shall protect children from sexual exploitation and abuse, including prostitution and involvement in pornography. There was hope for power when on January 29th, Justice Ephraim Georges sentenced a 43-year-old father of 13 to 20 years in prison for committing incest. And then he take off my panty and ask him why he's doing that. He said that he started telling me that it's a long time. He loved me and he wanted to have sex with me. And I asked him why because it's my daddy. He said that he is the one who mind me and nobody is, is going to take my virginity. It's not the first time. He, he did not do it once. He did it three times. <coughs> me before they do something to it. After December, he did it. February, again, I tell his mother and I told the welfare, welfare and told my teacher. And that same day, he beat me and ran up my leg with a stick. So the lady from welfare came up and saw my leg because it was swell. And then she goes, she left. And the third time now, I went into my, I went in for myself to the police. One of the factors that are operating there is the fact that some fathers do not think it's wrong to have a sexual relationship with their daughters. Uh, 
and it's, it's the whole thing too about not considering sexual uh, interference of children as anything wrong. Uh, this is my daughter. If it can be kept secret, it's okay. Um, it doesn't hurt her. What am I doing? Is she going to develop fever? Is she going to develop cancer from this thing? Is she going to die? And so that is part of the reasoning behind it. Um, there are still some societies and communities where fathers feel they should break in their daughters. I have rather had a father in Antigua tell me that um, if it's anybody, he's the best person. He, he wasn't involved in incest, but if there, if there was anybody to introduce his, his daughter to sex, he was the best person because he would know how to do it gently. He started wrestling with me, and he chipped me to the ground, and I fell. He forced himself on top of me. Then he had four sex with me. When I was trying to get away from him, he slapped me in my face twice. Then after, when he was done with me, he told me, if I go and tell anybody, or if I tell my mother, he will kill me. It's difficult to get children to come forward to say this has been happening to them. When you do get children to come forward, you find that there's a great conspiracy going on to hide it. Um, those who do report it now face all kind of problems. They have to report it to so many different people. They have to keep going over their story. But it was troubling me. It was troubling, it was still troubling me after, say, two days. And I say, he will have to kill me, but I had to tell my mother. So I told her, and she couldn't believe. So she brought me to a, a counselor. And I explained to the counselor, and she made the right thing to tell my mother. At Bayaboo in St. Vincent, we asked a group of 10 teenagers to tell us about communication with their mothers. And that was just in case they were abused. I will go and talk to the nurse, the nurses, because they live right just below me. I will go to somebody who I think can talk to my parents better, who have a better communication than with me. He can speak with somebody, like the school counselor, and the school counselor can speak with your head principal, who can report that back to your parents, or bring your parents into it, seeing that you cannot speak to your parents. And then from there on, you could just take it as a journey. There needs to be a protocol. What should happen when a child is abused? Um, what are the steps? And, and those steps should be made as easy as possible and as friendly as possible to that child. The question remains, what are the policies regarding the protection of the child? What is the status of existing legislation regarding child and sexual abuse. Presently, our statutes, on our statutes, there is the Employment of Children Prohibition Act. The Education Act also forbids children of school age from working instead of attending school. The Guardianship of Infant Acts and Infant Protection Act speaks for themselves. Through the Children and Young Persons Welfare Act, and Children and Young Persons Act, Sexual Offense Act, the Maintenance Act, and the Protection Against Domestic Violence Act, children are protected from neglect, exploitation, and various forms of abuse. Right. The, qu the problem is the legislation that is there already, they're either ignored or there are no teeth to ensure that the perpetrators are brought before the courts. And I would just want to point out what a consultant had to say in answer to your question. What a consultant had to say um, with regards to the laws here in Dominica vis-a-vis -vis the convention. That consultant was uh, um, commissioned by UNICEF to do a study of Dominica's law, laws vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the convention on the rights of the child. And, and the consultant says this, in general, the laws of Dominica are in conformity with the letter and the spirit of the convention. However, there is a lacuna between the law, its practice, and its enforcement. The same could be said in the cases of Antigua and St. Vincent. When a child appears at the health center or 
even if she never went to the health center, at the hospital to have a baby. And the, the, the persons at the hospital, the nurse, the doctor, whomsoever, are looking after that child. And they become...